Hello, are you special? Sometimes I think I'm very special. Sometimes I think because I've been somewhere a long time that I deserve certain kind of considerations. Well, I'm John Smizer, and it's good to be with you again today to be reminded of just where do I fit in God's plan? If you remember when Jesus was talking about those people who go to a banquet and, and they rush to the very front of the table, uh, the, the head table, and then they're asked to step down uh, because of someone more important arrives, uh, the feelings could be hurt. And Jesus encouraged people to sit at the lower end of the table and, and be invited up. I always think, well, I'm pretty special. Until I read a book by uh, Henry Nouwen, wonderful little book about the return of the prodigal, about the uh, issues, of course, we all know the young one who took dad's inheritance and ran away and squandered it, and how faithful uh, his father was to welcome him home. In this book, Henry Nouwen looked at each of the characters and saw how in my walk or in any Christian's walk, there may be a time when we might be any one of those characters, the young foolish, the welcoming father, or the elder brother who thinks he has uh, important standing where he's working. Today, let's look at God's word as he declares and encourages us in the community of people that come to worship. First Kings 8, 41 to 53. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name, for they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm when they come and pray towards this temple. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you. As do your own people Israel and may know that this house I have built bears your name. When your people go to war against their enemy Wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord towards the city you have chosen and the temple I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them, and give them over to their enemies, who take them captive to their own lands, far away or near. And if they have a change of heart in the land where they are helped, captive and repent and plead with you in the land of their captors and say we have sinned we have done wrong we have acted wickedly and if they turn back to you with all their hearts and soul in the land of their enemies who took them captive and pray to you towards the land you gave their ancestors towards the city you have chosen and the temple i have built for your name then from heaven your dwelling place hear their prayer and their plea and uphold their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Forgive all the offenses they have committed against you and cause their captors to show them mercy. For they are your people and your inheritance whom you brought out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace. May your eyes be open to your servant's plea and to the plea of your people Israel. And may you listen to them whenever they cry out to you. For you singled them out from all the nations of the world to be your own inheritance, just as you declared through your servant Moses when you, sovereign Lord, brought our ancestors out of Egypt. As we heard this passage from 1 Kings chapter 8, beginning of verse 41, read for us just a few moments ago. I want to draw your attention here to the opening section where, where it, uh, Solomon is speaking about the temple and how people will approach the temple. I think it's very interesting. In, in verse 41, it says, As for the foreigner 
who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name. Those people that have heard of Yahweh or those people who have heard of Jehovah and the the God of the Israelites, and they come to this temple to, to find out what it is about this. Oh, I'm sorry. My brain just had a quick reminder of the Ethiopian eunuch who in the New Testament had come to worship at the temple. He was from Ethiopia. He was a part of the royal groups. And and, and so here's these people coming. And then I'm reminded of uh, a people in the church I serve in. Uh, Whenever a, a person sits in their seat at a worship service, they might come become a little cantankerous, thinking, well, that's my seat. What are those visitors doing in my seat? Have you ever had that attitude? I know for myself, there are times that I think I'm special and deserve uh, better than what I'm getting. But in reality, where do I stand? I stand before God as a humble uh, receiver of his gifts of mercy to us. He goes on then in verse 42, for they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. And when they come and pray towards this temple, then hear from heaven, your dwelling place. Do not do whatever the foreigner asks of you. You mean God's going to answer the the request of a foreigner, of a Gentile, of a dog? Well, that's what Solomon recognized, that this temple was not just their temple, the Jewish people's temple. No, it was for all of the people to come and worship God. Where you worship, the church, the fellowship, the community of faith, is that for everybody? Or is that just for the special people? I want to encourage you to think a little differently. James talks about uh, preferential treatment people receive. And and that that's not a good thing in the church. So I, I want to encourage you in that. It goes on in verse 46. It says, when they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin. Wait a second. Am I a sinner? You mean I'm I'm a Christian? I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Am, Am I still one who sins? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And so are you. When I was, uh, growing initially in my Christian walk during my uh, college years, it was talked about that Christian bar of soap. And you all know that Christian bar of soap, don't you? Yeah, everybody needs to be using it all the time, especially when we had the COVID, uh, you know, the shutdown for a couple of years. It was wash your hands, keep everything clean. Well, in the kingdom of God, there's a need to also wash regularly, clean up regularly because there's sin in our lives. You know what that Christian bar of soap was, don't you? First John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he, God, is faithful and just, and he'll forgive you your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's the Christian bar of soap. It's something you need to be using. I need to be using, not just in the morning and in the evening. No, it's all day long. When I am driving on the freeway and somebody acts in a way that I don't think is the right way, I have an attitude. And it's that point. I need to agree with God that that's not the right attitude. See, it is the, what is it that's going to demonstrate to the world that we are followers of God? It's that we love, love our, love our God, love our neighbor, and also love one another. 
That especially is going to be the demonstration that we are those people who are following God, Jehovah. As you journey in this uh, challenge to not think of yourself too special, I want to encourage you to welcome those who may be seeking to learn more about God and love them into the community of faith. As we come to the end of our portion today, we have seen God who has been called on by Solomon to be listening to the prayer requests of, of people who are uh, asking for forgiveness, who are asking and calling on God to uh, forgive them in ways that they have uh, gone away from him. Also to uh, work within the foreigner's life. And, and I'm reminded especially of the, the statements made here. In verse 50, it says, And forgive your people who have sinned against you. Lord, I, I need forgiveness. The sin that I struggle with. Verse 52, May your eyes be open to your servant's plea. Yeah, that he hears my crying out. Lord, forgive me. Or the last part there say, may you listen to them whenever they cry out to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we struggle with our challenges. We are sometimes uh, not mindful or not aware of your working. And, and we uh, forget to acknowledge your goodness to us. Forgive us, Lord, that we do not keep our focus on you, that we don't keep our mind trained upon the truths you have for us. Lord, we pray that you would hear our confessions, our repentance, and Lord, in those ways, you would forgive us and cleanse us in our daily lives. Father, we thank you for being the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and of John Smizer. Lord, you are my God. You are our God. Guide us this day in your precious name. Amen.